This lesson is keeping it legal. The objectives for this lesson are to choose your business entity type, how you should always act like a business, your business and the law, contracts, working with employees and contractors. The first thing you need to do is determine what type of business entity are you going to be. And there's many kinds to choose from. You can be a sole proprietorship. You can be a C Corp or an S Corp. You can be a limited liability corporation. You can be a professional limited liability corporation. And then there are all sorts of partnerships that you can do. General partnership, limited partnership, limited liability partnership, limited liability limited partnership. You're going to have to choose from all of these. I'm going to talk a little bit about just a few of these that you'll probably want to start with. The first one is a sole proprietor. This is where one person owns the company, you. The problem is you are not recognized separately from the business. Now this has advantages and disadvantages. The advantages are, hey, really easy to set up and you are in complete control. The disadvantages are you can be sued personally by one of your clients. All taxes flow through to the owner and it does make it a little bit harder to work with large corporations. They generally don't want to work with a single person. Also can be harder to get a loan if you need it. The next kind of corporate entity is a C Corp. And this is an entity that is taxed separately from an owner. And again, there are advantages and disadvantages. The advantages being that you have some better tax planning opportunities. You can isolate an owner from liability, although there are some caveats on that. Better fringe benefits for the owner employees. Well-established legal precedents. Readily transferable shares. And you can even offer stock options. The disadvantages is it's a little more complex to set up. You can have double taxation. It's a lot of paperwork and formality that is required for this kind of business entity. An S-Corp is the next type of business entity. S-Corps do not pay any federal income taxes. The income losses are divided and passed through to the shareholders. Now this is probably what most people will start with here in the United States is an S-Corp. So you want to find out if this is appropriate for you. There are advantages. You can protect the assets of the shareholders. It can be a little more favorable tax-wise than a C-Corp. More credibility than a sole proprietorship. Now there still are some disadvantages, and that is that there are additional fees each year to keep this type of entity going. There's a little more paperwork. You could be subjected to closer IRS scrutiny here in the United States. And there are some stock ownership restrictions that go along with an S Corp. Another one that is frequently used to start out with is a partnership. This is where two or more individuals agree to share the management, the profit, and the loss of a business. And again, there are advantages and disadvantages. A partnership does not pay taxes. The taxes pass through to each of the partners. And sometimes two or more heads can be better than one in a business. Again, fairly easy to establish a partnership, at least here in the United States. Disadvantages are partners can be personally liable. You could be responsible for your partner's debts. Your partner or your partners can make a decision and you are then bound by that. Now, if you decide to go this route, very important that you draft a very good partner agreement. And something that needs to be in that partner agreement is how to dissolve the partnership in case the two partners disagree to such an extent that they realize they can no longer do business together. Now, regardless of what kind of entity you set up, it's very important that you always act like a business. You want to always keep work and personal separate. This is very important. It can help you avoid personal lawsuits. Separate working space for personal and business is required. 
it's best to rent an office or at least have a separate area of the house that is just for your business. Make sure you have a separate phone line. You want to have a business-only line. You might even consider a business cell phone, too. Do not mix bank accounts. Never pay anything personal from business. Never pay anything business from personal. Pay yourself a salary. Don't just take money out of the business. And if you have to take money out of the business, do it according to the bylaws of your business. These are the laws that you set up on how you're going to do business. Use QuickBooks or some accounting system. This helps you record where the money is going to and coming from. And you're going to find, especially with businesses, good record keeping is essential. Create a corporate logo, a letterhead, all those things. Always present yourself like a business, not just like an individual, even if that's all you are at this point is an individual. Still present yourself professionally by having all of these things in place. Let's talk a little bit about your business and the law. Now, laws will vary from state to state, from country to country, but each area of your business typically has legal ramifications. How you present things in your advertising and your marketing could be subjected to local laws. Intellectual property, who owns what? There could be environmental concerns depending on what your business is doing. How you handle your finance, your online presence, privacy, financial contracts, employees, workplace safety, and health codes. All of these things can be affected by the law and you need to understand what the laws are when you're doing business. Written contracts are always important to have and have a lawyer help you with this. Please get a lawyer to help you with your contracts. Contracts present a more formal presence to your clients. Sometimes you have to use your client's contracts. That's fine. But you want to have a set of your own standard contracts that you can use as well. Things like a non-disclosure, a master agreement, which is how you are going to work with the company, work for hire, work orders are the things that you're doing for the client under the umbrella of the master agreement. You might have some vendor or supplier contracts as well. An employment contract if you are hiring employees and a partnership contract if you're in a partnership. Most of the time in a business, you're going to have to wrestle with the decision of whether to hire employees or not. Should you hire employees? Well, it's a big decision because you need to manage them. So then you need to also find out and ask yourself, are you a good manager? And there are advantages and disadvantages to hiring employees. I mean, the advantages are you can make money on each employee. That means you can take on bigger jobs, and that, again, should hopefully make you more money. The disadvantages are, if they are not working, you typically still have to pay them. Okay, you must provide vacation, sick time, benefits, so there's extra work and money on your part. So this is things that you need to take into account when hiring employees. If you do hire employees, make sure you create an employee handbook, and this handbook should be what you expect from your employees. It outlines things like vacation, work, and sick hours, intellectual property rights, at-will employment. Now, this also vary by locale, so make sure you check your local laws to see if you can do at-will employment or not, when and how you're going to evaluate the employee, also recognize here in the United States, you're going to have to pay approximately 7.5% of their Social Security taxes. So I highly recommend using a payroll company because they can get it right for you. Also, you should offer benefits if possible. 401k, medical, dental, vision, all of these things are wonderful benefits that will help you attract a better class of employee. Now, at some point, you might also... Think about hiring contractors. So you contract an outside person or persons for a project. You have a contract for them and a non-compete. Now recognize they are not employees. So 
Do not treat them as employees because that can have tax ramifications. And again, advantages and disadvantages to hiring contractors. Advantages, you can just hire them for a short time. You can let them go at any time. No benefits need to be paid. And typically, they're going to be responsible for their own taxes. Again, that can vary a little bit, so make sure you check with a lawyer. Disadvantages are they can leave at any time. They have no loyalty to your company, and you can't completely control them. They may or not present well to your clients, and they could even try to steal your clients. That's why you want to make sure you have a good non-compete contract with them. In this lesson, we talked about an S-Corp is probably the best for starting out, but again, a sole proprietor may also be right for you. Be sure to keep your work and your personal stuff separate. Create some good standard contracts. Employees will better represent your company. Contractors can be good in a pinch. Always, always get advice from a lawyer, from an accountant, for anything related to contracts in your business. Coming up next, set up for financial success.